Yes, it is. The Philippines has 7,107 islands, of which only 2,000 are inhabited. Clustered into three main groups, namely Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. I am here right now in Cebu, and I'm about to visit four islands in Lapu-Lapu. Now, who could possibly join me now? Me! Hi, Ruby! Hi, Carl! I definitely want to go on an island hopping trip in Lapu-Lapu. The island in Cebu best known for its pristine beaches. That's great! I'm really looking forward at how we can help protect the island's marine life. And I heard that Cebuanos nowadays are really into permaculture. True! So are you ready to join me in all of my green advocacies in the Philippines? Yes, I am! So ready? ready? Get, Get set, set! Go, go roar! roar! is known to give anybody a taste of the best island living in the world. With our sunny skies, turquoise beach water, and white to clean colored sand, not to mention the happy, smiling, and friendly natives, it is no wonder why foreigners choose the Philippines to go island living. And Cebu particularly remains a favorite. Tan Island is part of Cebu Province and it is divided into Lapu-Lapu City and the Municipality of Cordoba. And nestled in a private beach away from the noise of the city is one of Lapu-Lapu's most idyllic beach spot, the Pacific Cebu Resort. All white and very tranquil, this 6.5 hectare paradise sits 136 luxury rooms. It has three mega-sized pools, one of which serves as a diving pool where the resort holds its own diving course under the Pacific Cebu divers. Equipped with their own diving shop, a spa called Mosaic, dine and relax at their La Terraza restaurant, or even bask in the calmness of the ocean at the Lantawan View Deck. It is in Lapu-Lapu City that the best pristine beaches of Cebu are found. Lapu-Lapu is home to four island destinations and first on our list today is Kauhagan Island, which is famous for its seafood and seashells. Considered a separate island, Kauhagan Island is a popular island hopping and swimming destination because of its long stretch of white sand beach. Kauhagan Island po is about 600, 6 hectares approximately. Maraming turista pong pumupunta doon kasi may white sandy beach po doon. Oh, Tapos po, uh, malinaw at malinis po ang tubig kaya uh, ang mga turista ay doon po nahiligan na nilang maligo at mag snorkeling. Also famous for its fresh seafood, fish, clam, seashell, crab, lobster, the island is still at times threatened by illegal and overfishing. Kumpara po sa ibang isla, ang kahogan po ay may maraming puno. Kaya nga... So marami uh, siyang mga trees? Yes po. Mga trees. So uh, is it easy for me to say na marami rin siyang birds? Uh, may mga ano po, birds. 
Pero hindi po sila residents, mga migratory birds lang po sila. Tapos dumadaan lang sila, papunta na po sila sa Olango Island Wildlife ah, Sanctuary. Ah, okay. So parang stopover yes, po. ng mga birds ito since oh. you have a lot of trees on their way to Olango yes, Island, po. mga migratory oh. birds. Now, ano yung mga naging threats ng uh, Kauhagan Island? Ano mga problema nila right now? Ah. Ah, sa ngayon po, Uh, mayroong na-establish na marine sanctuary doon sa Kahwagan. Isa po sa mga threat ay yung uh, illegal fishing ng activities ng mga taga-ibang uh, ibang isla. Kasi yes. po, uh, mas marami silang makukuha doon sa Kahwagan kumpara doon sa kanila kasi uh, nakasanayan na nila yung mga illegal activities so naubos na sa kanila. So doon na sila sa amin. So nag-move in yes, na sila opo. sa ibang areas. To protect their island, The locals themselves act as a social fence. Kahwagan Marine Sanctuary po ay meron na pong mga magagandang mga corals at maraming isda. Maging responsibilidad po tayo sa ano sa basura natin. Huwag na lang po natin basta-basta itapon sa mga coastal area o sa mga uh, dasa dagat po. Island living has attracted many foreigners here like a philanthropist Korean who owns half of this island called Kaubian Island. Uh, meron kaming pinong program dito sa barangay namin. Uh, okay. Gumagawa kami ng livelihood program okay. kaso, kaso hindi pa kami naka, nakakaumpisa. Tapos okay. yung inuna namin, yung sa dagat talaga kasi okay. yun yung maraming problema. So gumawa kami ng sanctuary tapos okay. tinulungan kami ng company ng Chevron tapos tapos yung city naman nag counterpart sila Located at the east side of Mactan, Kaubian has two islands, Kaubian Gamay and Kaubian Dako or the Po Island. Bali dalawang isla tong uh, island ng Kaubian, isang okay. malaki, isang isang maliit. Yung maliit, bali private din 'yun. Tapos okay. 'yun yung ginagawa namin. Barangay na ngayon, yung mas maganda dito kasi parang nanatili siyang virgin tapos wala gaanong crowd. Okay. Then maraming mga ano dito, seahorse, merong iba't ibang kasi ng seahorse, saka mga shell, mga isda, mas malayo. Mas marami pang nakaka, kakaunti pa lang dito yung nakaka-explore dito sa amin. So tapos hindi pa gaanong crowd. So... Wala pa, wala pa kasi... Kumbaga, like what you said, it's Virgin yes, Island. Yes, Virgin Island. So, kailangan talaga siya ma-appreciate siya ng buong tao. Kung gusto nilang uh, pumunta dito sa Lapu-Lapu, kailangan lahat, oh, lahat ng area ng Lapu-Lapu dapat puntahan nila na oh, para Makita naman ma-appreciate nila kung gaano kaganda. This smaller Kaubian Island is breathtaking with its cream-colored sands and clear waters. Bukod sa enforcement, meron kaming pulis at saka yung mga barangay pulis at saka mga face war din. So binabantayan niyo binabantayan ang yung waters water, to make yung, sure oh, na yung, yung mga illegal activities eh, ma-stop ma ma ninyo. Ma maraming seers dito na endangered na. So okay. maraming mga mga shell dito. So maraming gaong, bio, oh, marine biodiversity mm, na mm, nakita pwede, oh, nila na worth na suportahan inyong oh. programa. Oh. Continuous efforts are being done by the locals to protect their two islands as it is a marine protected sanctuary. Another gem in Cebu is the Lima Island, a dive site famous for a small shipwreck found underneath its waters and an abundance of gorgeous and exotic fish in which they now reside. Which is why the City Fisheries and Aquatic Marine Council of Lapu-Lapu sees to its protection. Ilan na ang marine protected areas meron sa Lapu-Lapu? As of now, mayroon na tayong uh, Siam na protected area. Nine! Yes. Ang dami na pala niya. Uh, And what are the criteria para maging makwalify sila as a marine protected area? Uh, ano, first, ano yung no, mga kailangan? Uh, mayroon kami yung ginagawang kuan, public consultation, public, public consultation. hearing sa barangay, okay. including sa mga fisher folks, okay. uh, apiktado ng mga pangisda nila. Okay. Then, there is a letter of intent Okay. Then, i-monitor namin, mayroon kaming uh, rip-seek monitoring or evaluation. Okay. Kung kailangan bang i-protecta ang, ang lugar. Yung no? area yeah, na yon. Yeah. True it is, 
The Lima Island Marine Sanctuary is one protected area located in the tropical waters off the west coast of Olango Island. Ano yung mga problema right now ng marine protected areas na? Uh, uh, pag ngay uh, ngayon, ma'am, mayroon pa, mayroon pa ng uh, mga illegal fishing na... Illegal fishing? Yes, mayroon pa. Pero yes. konti na lang. Locals or mga dayuhan? Ang iba, mga dayuhan. Si other, other as a local. Uh, ano, so outside Lapu-Lapu Out, City yes, or outside uh, 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 Cebu area. Yeah. Home to an abundant species of tropical fish and even a small shipwreck at 18 meters. So what are the solutions na ginawa ng uh, sea farm ng inyong uh, organization and council? By the way, mayroon kaming kuan, ang city of Lapu-Lapu na created the Tax Force Kalikasan. No? Oh, okay. Then mayroon tayong uh, deputized fish warden. Yes, yes. Then including sa... We met one. Yeah, and also the fish examiner. I'm also a fish examiner, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. okay. So marami so, kayong Complete na. Complete okay. na ang... Ngayon, mayroon na tayong uh, may, mayroon ng, uh, development. Lapu-Lapu is bustling and grooving and occupies most of Mactan Island. But even with the high urbanization in the city, Lapu-Lapu strives to be clean and green. How would you describe the ecosites of Lapu-Lapu and how important are they to the city? Well, uh, basically we have uh, nine uh, ecosites here and plus the wildlife sanctuary here in Lapu-Lapu City and uh, as well as Olango and the Caubian Island. Mm -hmm. uh, it was some maintained by uh, the L L LGU okay. and also some are maintained by the resort for the guests mm -hmm. to go there and to enjoy as well as the, the underneath uh, activities. That is why they are beefing up their ecotourism programs in the island to meet the demands of all industries concerned. We position Lapu-Lapu City as the tourism hub, so ecotourism is one. Right. And uh, with, with the help of the corporates, uh, they, they maintain it and they will showcase to the visitors and locals as well. As of now, we, we have this uh, island, the uh, Olango Bird Sanctuary, and okay. they coordinated with the community in San Vicente, Barangay San Vicente, and they come up with the association that we will maintain and also to entertain guests while doing there their practices as well as how to maintain the area right. and to, to, to clean the area and to do some uh, tree planting which is uh, part of their uh, good practices. I see. So uh, I understand also island hopping is big in Lapu-Lapu Lapu -Lapu City because you have a lot of four, four major islands. Yes. Right. So what are the activities that they can do? They go places, they rent a boat. But some they coordinated with the travel agents or tra tour operators, and uh, they they have the itinerary to go uh, first uh, first island, second island, third and fourth okay. island. Namely, they are uh, from uh, uh, Panganan, Kaubian, Olango Island, and uh, uh, Kawagan as well. So there are different types of features that you will. By the time you go there. It's a different experience that you will have when you go from one island, uh, island to, to the, the other. others because they have features. Um, uh, they're, Different they're, they're unique culinary. features. Yes, uh, when you say unique features, they're, they're, they're food, they're culinary. So uh, they have the seashells. The famous one is saang. Uh, saang is uh, seashells okay. and uh, you simply just cook it. Uh, steam it? Uh, steam it, sometimes they grill it. And as they work hard to make their city the cleanest, if not the greenest, this island side of Cebu, Lapu-Lapu strives even harder to protect all their natural resources. Arimo Diri, come to Lapu-Lapu because you will have a great experience.
While Ruby is busy learning how to dive under Pan Pacific's hotel diving course, which I say is a must when you are in Cebu so that you can enjoy all the breathtaking islands, I hop on my fourth island hopping in Lapu-Lapu and headed to Nalasuan Island, which is considered to be the smallest island and now a marine protected area. So sir, uh, how big is Nalusan Island? Uh, in terms of land, we have about uh, 5,316 square meters lang yung land. Uh, but the sanctuary that we are protecting is about 73 hectares. The unique of this one, an island within the sanctuary. Nalusuan is also famous for this picture-perfect sandbar that stretches all the way to those two islands. First, the sandbar, if it is low tide, you can, you can use the sandbar about 2 hectares. 2 hectares? Yes, but if it is high tide, uh, you cannot see the, uh, the, the sandbar. So only the low tide, you can enjoy soccer, you can enjoy uh, playing volleyball. In terms of uh, biodiversity, how can you say that uh, the Lusan Island sets itself apart from the rest of uh, Cebu's uh, biodiverse culture? First, we are the, the, the sanctuary, we are protecting the three kinds of like the sandbar, which as you can see here, the seagrass and the corals. On both sides of the island, you will be enjoying the, the, the marine life. If you go to the sandbar, there's a lot of uh, uh, like seashells you enjoy. And if you go to the uh, coral, you can see the beauty of the corals like the table corals like the staghorn corals, uh, bubble coral, or brain corals, in which you will be enjoying the, the, the snorkeling. You can see this one, you, you don't need to dive. You don't need but, to dive? Yes, only snorkeling or swimming, you can enjoy the beauty of a uh, coral side. Okay. If it is really low tide, this is almost two kilometers from the next island, Hirutungan. You can walk from here to the next island. You can actually walk? Yes, you can walk. The smallest island, but with the most colorful and friendliest marine life I've seen so far. Uh, we have a, uh, in Ol Olango, one of the famous bird sanctuary. It's just our neighbor, isn't that on that side? Oh, this side? Yes, it's, it's okay. famous of the uh, bird sanctuary. So every uh, late October until early April, they migrated on that area. So one of the places they like, if it is low tide, you can see a lot of birds here. This is the best snorkeling spot in the island for the fishes will even swim on top of your head. Do you have other threats like, I don't know, pollution or um, uh, how's the waste management on this island? The biggest problem, one of the biggest problem here uh, is the garbage. It's, we cannot control because some of the garbage is float coming from the city, oh. like a pack of garbage or one, one bundle of garbage floating on the coming from the city, coming here. So, as our part, we cannot do because it's really, really big garbage, huge garbage coming from the city. But some of the tourists, when they arrive here, we try to inform them about their garbage here. Like, whatever you bring, what that's inside, you should bring in. Mm. We don't have the uh, garbage area, so that's why our garbage here, we have to bring it to the city. A protected area, eco-warrior like Edric has committed his time and work to protect this sanctuary from poachers. As of now, they, uh, we already somewhat, not really control, but at least we, we, we inform them because as of, uh, right now, no more uh, dynamite fishing. Totally That's no good. more dynamite. With the coordinations of the local government of the Cordoba, especially the mayor, Adi uh, Nositoy, uh, mm. so with the help of this his, his municipal, we coordinated with them and help to arrest or uh, catch the illegal uh, activities in this area. Back here in the city and with Cebu gearing up to be a bikeable city, another eco-warrior whose advocacy is for people to return to the old way of bike to work again. Abagat always has this advocacy for the environment so since we're based our company is based on uh, the outdoor. What we do is we conduct a lot of what we call outdoor training courses. You know, we believe change has to start from within. So we start within the company, Bike to Work, that started there. We encourage our employees to instead of commute uh, by jeepney or by bus, to bike to work. To work. 
save, save a lot of money that way. Right, you save a lot of money, and it's healthier. Clean. And then you yes. don't contribute right. to pollution, and, and everything is... The environment. Working to be stewards of the environment, they have started the Bike to Work program in 2008. Right now, they are supporting the Road Revolution Cebu that will bring change in the road system by implementing a mass transit system with a renewable energy source. We organize simultaneous bike rides across the city. Mm -hmm. It's more like a show force for the environment. It's uh, in conjunction with the Earth Hour celebration all over the world. Right, that's the international yes, Earth Hour that's that we have. Where so in you... one hour, we, as much as possible, people try to uh, turn, turn off the lights. lights not right. use power right. and not use cars, that's right. the concept. Aware of the continuous degradation of the environment, the companies behind many great campaigns that aim to protect the environment. Habagat as a company has always been supportive of different advocacies done by different groups, like there's like this, the scuba diving group of Cebu, for instance, has this regular uh, clean the ocean campaign. Okay. So Habagat goes in and takes a look at what resources are needed for them to do a successful cleanup. So that's where we can come in. A lot of groups also in the mountaineering community, they do a lot of cleanups. Right, right. So it's pretty common for them to ask Habagat to sponsor. And then we say, we don't give you money, guys, we don't give you money, but we can give you garbage bags. We can give you bags to put the garbage in. We can provide transports. Habagat has also started the Clean Earth Campaign to promote multi-purpose canvas bags as an alternative to plastic bags and the promotion of Earth Hour. Being in the outdoor equipment industry, we feel the responsibility has been upon us to be stewards of the environment. And we would like to pass that on to, our, to you know, everybody who would care to listen. Taking care of the environment doesn't require you to totally change your life. Every everyday little things, it will all add up. We have this uh, corporate culture that we want to inculcate among the yes. people of Abagat, our staff, our workers. It has to be a lifestyle. Lifestyle change. Yes, yes. And, and the theme is we should always be what we normally term as capitalism with a conscience. Okay. So it's not really all about the money, Abagat doesn't think that way. It's actually how we make use of our profits, how we put back Give some back of our profits to the community, to, the to, community to, to nature, to the environment. So that is simply the reason why we're very active in supporting advocacies for the outdoors, for the greater environment. True to its work, built by hand, tested by nature, Habagat continues to support all environmental and conservation acts. I am inspired by how Cebu is leading the way to be green and inspiring everyone to be conscious in protecting their environment. But one family here in Cebu is doing good by adapting and practicing permaculture into their lifestyle and business. You are one of the founders of K-Puff and I believe you are practicing permaculture in this place. Two things, what is K-POF and what's permaculture? Mm -hmm. um, K-POF stands for Katungan Permaculture Adventure Farm. 
Um, this is a nature sanctuary um, for life-changing community adventures. With the benefit it gives to the environment, they are now advocating the entire island to take heed and include the permaculture way of life. Permaculture is about um, redesigning our way of life that's based on nature. So it's about continuing to live in the modern world with all the technology and all the advances in our society and yet uh, continue to base our way of living on nature's principles. Okay. Care for the people, care for the planet, and mm -hmm. care for the future. Okay. And based on that, we have design principles. So nature will teach us how we can actually design the way we live. Nature can live without us, but we cannot live without nature. A word that stems from permaculture that was originally referred to as permanent agriculture. From nature, we can learn to help ourselves. That's right. So we can learn to be self-reliant right. and to be independent. So here you can see how we have made very simple solutions uh, based on nature. So an example would be this pond. So this is a spring-fed pond. Okay. So we made this big spring at this pond and we can do um, simple um, kayak, kayak clinic. clinic. Permaculture is a philosophy of working with rather than against nature. So example would be here we have a labyrinth. Okay. Um, this is a meditation garden. It's a it's about meditating and walking and getting into your core. So permaculture is at its core, it's about care. So in everything we do, okay. it's about caring really for what we have. Edna and her family have started permaculture as a way of life and has adapted an ecological design and structure in their farm. As we journey into life towards our core, we can only get to our core if it is based on care. Okay. Because if we don't care, it's all about destruction and violence and ultimately it's our own destruction. All of our human existence depends on the ecosystem. So in our business, we have made it our core principle to really transfer that and say care for people, planet and future. It's not just profit, but it's sharing the surplus. Permaculture brings a sense of peace and calmness in your life as it teaches you the greatest lesson, respect nature. In the farm sense, the word farming really means growing things. So right. we grow in the mind, we grow in the heart, we mm -hmm. grow in the spirit. And from all of that growth, um, all of this will come out in our hands. So permaculture gives us an opportunity to stop. And okay, okay stop first and let nature follow. It's called F-A-L-L-O-W. It's like letting it rest and get restored. Here, this is something we started in 2008, and it's 2014 now. Now it's a forest for six years. How nature started it, and we just help by planting some of these mangroves here. So nature is not a venue for recreation. Nature is our teacher. What makes Mactan and Lapu-Lapu cities amazing is the way they protect and campaign to people to protect their homes, their islands. They fight for clean air by advocating a bike-friendly city and pushing for permaculture in all aspects of living. Cebuanos are shouting to everyone, respect and protect nature because a clean environment is a key to a healthier tomorrow. I'm Ruby. And I'm Carl, urging you to do the right thing today. Go for a healthy lifestyle. Lessen your carbon footprint by taking your bike or your board to help clean the air. And best of all, plant trees, not just once, but aim to plant weekly, so you will leave something for your children and humanity. Hey,